Erev in the today's email comes to us from Zevi Shufer. He says, I'd like to say that I enjoy your shir very much and it makes my day. I like the way you present the shir and I appreciate all the hours you've put in to prepare for the shir. I wish you lots of atzlacha. May we finish many mesechas together. Sincerely, Shloim Zev Shufer. Shkoyach Zevi. If one puts schach on top of an achsadra, a pergola that has ptsimen, these are poles that are away from each other, less than three tfachim. Kasha, we say, love it, it's perfect sukkah. But if you don't have ptsimim, according to Abaya, it's a kasha sukkah, p tikri dari v'saisim. We have imaginary walls, invisible walls, kasha. According to Rava, we don't say p tikri dari v'saisim. Now, according to the machlegs we had yesterday between Rav and Shmuel, Rav says you say p tikri dari v'saisim even when you don't have four walls at all. And according to Shmuel, you need at least one wall. Shmuel could only get along with Rava. Rava says it doesn't work in our case. Machlaikas, in Rav, perhaps Rava agrees to Rav. That you could say, but in this particular case, because we're dealing with a sukkah, and you didn't build this pergola, the top part, the P that comes down, wasn't built with Shem sukkah, perhaps even Rav agrees that you don't say, we learned in the Mishnah, that according to Rabbi Yaisi, as explained by the Gemara, if you have two breaches in the wall, according to Rabbi Yaisi, right there and then on Shabbos, you must refrain from carrying. Even though Shabbos came in, we don't say Kivin Shehutra Shabbos came in with a perfect arrow. It continues throughout, and we don't care what happened. Since it broke on Shabbos, you can no longer carry. And in fact, Rabbi Chia Bar Yosef passing the halacha like Rabbi Yaisi. However, Shmuel says, no, the halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda, that one Shabbos comes in and it's an area we don't care that later on the walls broke. And Shmuel said, as we had earlier on in the Masech, that the halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda in all Hilchas Erevin. But when it comes to a mechitza in our Masech, that depends. If the breach occurred where it's open to a Carmelist, and worse comes to worse, you might carry from within your house into a Carmelist, which is only an Isid Rabbanan, then the halacha will remain like Rabbi Yehuda. But if in a case that the breach is open to Rosh Hashanah, then the halacha is not like Rabbi Yehuda, and it would be also to carry. Says the Mishnah. What if you have an overpass made out of a house? You have two houses on both sides of Rosh Hashanah, and someone built a large house spanning the Rosh Hashanah, or a bridge. What we do is we say, P. Tikre Yard of the edges of the bridge and the building come down, and anything beneath the bridge and the building is considered Rosh Hashayach. And you can carry there. Rabbi Yehuda says, and we had this case a number of times, if you have two houses on both sides of the Rosh Hashayach, you own them both, all you do is put two lechis or two kairas across, and you can carry a middle of Rosh Hashayach because you have two proper mechitzes, and the rest of the two mechitzes are enough. And Chachamim argue. And with that, we finish Pereg Kol Gagos. Brand new Pereg. The final Pereg in the Masechta. If a person finds tefillin that are in danger of being destroyed by animals, and these are tefillin that you could see that they're in fact tefillin, they're older, they have a kesher, the shin, dalad, yud, they are not a kamea, they're not emulets. So according to the Tanakhama, you can save one pair of tefillin at a time. You put on one pair of tefillin and you walk to where you need to go and take it off and then come back. According to Rabbi Gamliel, you can save two pairs of tefillin at a time. If you find many pairs of tefillin, so you sit there and wait until Shabbos is over, since anyways you can't save them all, it will take you too long. If you're concerned about a sakana, Rashi says list them over here, so what you do is you cover it and you leave, because you don't want to be caught watching over those tefillin. The Goyim are not happy with that, the Lissim are not happy. Rabbi Shimon has a great idea, he says, Rather than saving it by putting them on, what you do is you bring your friend, bring different people, and you pass it one to the other. The same thing you could do if a baby was born in the middle of the desert without an Arab. You pass the baby from person to person, so you don't have to carry pachis, pachis, medalad amas. The Buddha says, you don't need a baby, you don't need a mitzvah. Even if you want a barrel of wine, you could pass the barrel of wine from one to the other. You could even go more than the tchum like that. And Chachamim argue, and they say, no, the barrel is limited to the Owners to chum. When it comes to saving your garments from a fire, Rabbi Meir holds, you can wear as many garments, many layers, take them out of the burning house, bring them out into the chatzar, repeat. But when it comes to tefillin, Rabbi Meir agrees, you can only save one pair at a time. And the reason is because by clothing, 
there's no limit to how many clothing you could, how much clothing you can wear during the week. It's filling you're limited to one pair, and on Shabbos they allow you to save as much as you can wear during the week. As we learned in the Mishnah, when Leel holds, they can save two pairs of tefillin at a time, not three, not one. The Gemara says, well, if you go according to Rav Shmuel or Rav Yitzchak, that a person has enough room on his head to wear two tefillin, and enough room on his arm to wear two tefillin, so you save two. And we'll go into that. Where exactly do you wear your tefillin? Well, tefillin shayad you wear on your bicep. If you split your bicep in half, it goes right there at that half point, from the half point closer to your elbow. When it comes to the head, it goes from the baby soft spot, so you draw a line from your ear up until the beginning to where the roots of your hair end or start. So we could explain that Rabbi Gamaliel goes according to Rav Shmuel Bar Yitzchok. We could explain in five different ways, and today we'll explain in three ways. It's possible that everybody agrees that Shabbos is not a day that you're permitted to wear tefillin. Tefillin are a an ornament. So the machlaikis is whether or not a person has enough room on his head and on his hand to wear two pairs of tefillin. Or, everybody agrees that there's enough room to wear two tefillin. The Tanakama holds Shabbos is a day that you can wear tefillin, and it's not a tachshed, it's not an ornament. So if you wear a second pair, you're over on Baltaisa. So you can only save one pair at a time. Rabbi Gamliel says Shabbos is not a time to wear tefillin, and there's no iser of Baltaisev. It's an ornament, so if it's an ornament, you can wear two, three, wouldn't be a nice ornament, so you cannot save three. Or, finally, for today, according to everybody, Shabbos is a time for tefillin, and it's an ornament. Tanakama says, mitzvah is kavan, according to the second Shadon Rashi and his preferred pshat, a mitzvah, you don't have to have intent. So if you don't have, an, have to have intent, you don't have to have intent to be over on the Avera of Baal Taisef. So if you wear two pairs of tefillin without any intent, You'd be over on Baal Taisif, and therefore you could only save one. Rabbi Gamliel says, Mitzvah is Tzricha is Kavana. You have to have intent to perform the mitzvah, and therefore you have to have intent to be over on Baal Taisif. So if you don't have intent to be Mkhaim the Mitzvah, you just want to save these tefillin, you can save two pairs of tefillin. Have a wonderful day.